What is going on YouTube? Hannah back making another brand new Crypto TV episode. In today's video, we are going to be looking at XRP, Ethereum, Bitcoin, as well as the S&P 500. Specifically in today's video, I do have an interesting uh, chart that I do want to show you guys, as well as an interesting article in reference to the S&P 500. Uh, specifically looking at the recent trends that have been forming on most of these major cryptocurrencies, you guys can see we have been in a continued falling wedge pattern here. And you can also see Ethereum is in one as well as XRP is also inside a massive falling wedge pattern. Notice how for most of these cryptocurrencies, we have pretty much uh, completed the consolidation that was necessary to get us back in touch with the downtrend and the recent resistance level here. Notice here that this is resistance. We had one point of contact, two, uh, very close to three. We had four, five, six. And now here we are at the seventh point of contact. We've once again consolidated from being in the middle of the falling wedge to coming all the way back up or trading sideways, doesn't matter, but re testing clearly this resistance on the downtrend. We're seeing the same thing happen on uh, Ethereum here as it had one, two, three, and here we are with the fourth retest of top resistance. Yes, we consolidated it up, which is great following pursuit very much so with the S&P 500 as it found support, consolidated up. Now we're hitting a resistance. S&P is doing the same thing, consolidated and then broke bullish. This is on the hourly, so don't look too closely at this one, but I'm just giving this reference here. And you can see most of these cryptos are in falling wedges and are currently hitting top resistances at the resistance level, the downtrend right here. XRP isn't, but is very, very, very close to actually hitting that too. You can see we've consolidated on support uh, for quite some time now since the 22nd. It is currently the uh, 2nd of February here. So we've had about like 10, maybe nine days, or I think 11 days now of sideways consolidation. We're getting close to retesting this resistance, but it was expected to see us complete the gap here and then maybe get that decision that we're looking for. But the reason I'm showing you guys these are in regards to the fact that these are all in falling wedges. And this is what a falling wedge represents. And you can see this here on daily FX that we tend to see this consolidation within it, a closing wedge. And then after retesting resistance, we tend to break bullish through the downtrend. And you can see it very much so on this chart here, and hopefully you can see what it is that I'm referring to. So what we're trying to do is find which one of these retests is going to be the breakout. We've had one here, we've had one here, and here as well as currently retesting here. And we're looking to say, okay, is this the final retest of top resistance where we can break through it? You can see on Ethereum, we've had multiple retests of this resistance. Is this the one that breaks us through? Bitcoin as well. We've been in a resistance since November 9th. Is this the retest that breaks us through? And we can swing things up. We can say, okay, well, maybe it looks a little bit better on the weekly and stuff like that. Who knows? But regardless, we are looking for that final retest of the resistance that allows us to swing through it. And that's kind of what we have to look at today. I also have an article which is suggesting that veteran strategist David Roche warns markets could be at a turning point towards a bear market, not necessarily towards a bullish one. And that's something we also have to discuss looking at the S&P 500. With that being said, guys, today's video is brought to us by Alto IRA. We haven't actually talked about them in quite some time now, but they have been a previous sponsor here on the channel. Alto IRA actually gives you more out of an IRA, allowing you to invest in um, not so much common things that you would normally invest into IRAs as just mutual funds or stocks. It allows you to buy into alternative asset classes like real estate, cryptocurrency, secured, uh, securitized art, as well as private equities and venture capital into your Roth IRA, which is really cool. More information about Alto IRA will be at the end of today's video, so stay tuned for that. I've also linked them in the description if you'd like to check them out earlier. With that being said, definitely make sure to smash the like button, turn on post notifications, subscribe, and let's dive into today's episode. So to start, guys, I do want to talk about here this article, which is basically saying we can go over the key points, and that's really all we need for this article here. But the strategist David Roche warns the recent volatility could be a turning point toward a bear market rather than a temporary speed bump in a continued bull run. And that's really the main thing that I want to talk about here. And he explained all good factors that drove economies during the pandemic, which we know, uh, which was increased bond buying, which was a heightened uh, balance sheet, all these reasons lower interest rates and lower rates, 
caused economic prosperity. But since they are removing this from the economy come this year, it's expected to see markets drop. And he says, such as government financing of both household and corporate balance sheets are set to be slowly withdrawn, which is expected. And I agree to a certain expectation with David Roche here. Uh, so what I what he means by this, and I want to show you guys here, is we have been in what appears to be a pretty strong uptrend. This is a bull market for quite some time now. And even though we found some sort of speed bump and prices are starting to consolidate back up, he doesn't expect to see prices to, you know, gain us back into here just to continue on our merry way into the end of 2022, seeing prices head higher. And I think he's right. There's a lot of negative things uh, that usually affect the markets in a bad way coming out soon, come towards next month in March here, which could influence prices to see reversal and dips. So I would expect to see maybe consolidation in here and then continued correction downwards. It's very possible that we could see this. And I'm not trying to spread FUD in, in any sense. I'm just trying to prepare us in that sense of dollar cost averaging until we know we've hit a bottom here. The interesting thing is you can see we've been calling this symmetrical triangle formation uh, uh, breakout since Friday, actually. And now we've had Monday and today's Tuesday. We haven't opened up yet. We're waiting for another hour at 930 before we open up to see what's happening. But you can see we are retesting overbought, which is um, kind of like the understanding that we might see a small correction on a very short term scale, which is just the hourly here, maybe seeing sideways trading because we um, we broke bullish and we're seeing an extreme run to the upside here. Although we do look to be flipping bullish and seeing a bullish or a golden cross here on the moving averages, I do believe we might see a small amount of consolidation. This might last a day, maybe a, just a couple of hours here. And you can see now as I slowly extend outwards back to the four hour and then we'll go to the daily here. We're not really doing too bad when we jump to four hour and daily prices. You can see we're nowhere near overbought just yet. You can see we're currently trading at about 54 on the relative strength indicator and we're nowhere near the moving average, but we might see that flip soon. So we're in a very interesting predicament. I'm jumping to the daily now to get a better view. You can see we're retesting moving average. I would love to see us absolutely love to see the prices actually break us through our moving averages and get us back above here inside this zone here and we just continue along our merry way inside this ascending fractal here that would be the greatest thing if we see the rest of february which you can see ends about right here this is where february ends um so we don't have much more time left before they start putting out some interesting information in the zone in regards to the balance sheet as well as increasing rates now not always and it is proven that increasing rates doesn't necessarily imply that we're going to see markets drop but if rates do come out more so with balance sheet coming out and selling off our assets that usually causes correction in the markets and that's something that i believe we should be paying attention to so who knows what exactly is to come but i do know that uh with the s p 500 specifically it directly influences the prices of xrp and ethereum and bitcoin here so you can see what's interesting is s p is retesting some pretty critical resistance levels right now the moving average which we haven't been below in a very 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 long time it's literally been since cheese we can go back a very long time from now um the last time we broke you know, last time we were retesting, it was back in April of 2020 here, and we're currently doing the same thing, retesting it. Um, it appears that usually when we do break below the moving average, we don't tend to stay below it for that long. Last time we broke through it, it was a very quick uh, reversal up to, you know, back to the upside here. And the same thing happened here. It was a very quick reversal where he broke back above it. So there's a chance this is going to be short term too for a while. Uh, I'm hoping we don't see a major dump on the market come the balance sheet here. But I did buy in at these lows, um, hoping that this is the lowest we move to with anticipation of correct back to the upside here. So we'll see how we react with this moving average. Hopefully we continue to break above that and can get back and you know, back inside the zone here, uh, long term moving forward for the rest of February. We have a bullish February and then we'll see how, you know, March and the rest of the year unravels here. But what does this have to do with XRP and these cryptocurrencies? Well, with the market starting to correct upwards, you can see XRP is also doing a similar thing. You can see we haven't actually broken bearish just yet. The past couple of days on the S&P 500, we've been pretty bullish since the consolidation. And this has allowed XRP to actually stay afloat above a, an extreme resistance level or extreme, sorry, support level, a price floor at 58.59 cents. If we see prices actually break through this support at 59 cents, we can expect to see an extreme drop in volume and volatility as well as overall price. And this would immediately cause a massive sell off to the downside here. Now, we haven't necessarily sold out of XRP just yet. We still have a short position opened on BitYard, which hopefully you guys are familiar with. 
BitYard is the number one trading platform that we use here on the channel to leverage trade cryptocurrencies, as well as buy long, short them, spot trade, everything you can think of. They also have free cryptocurrency if you sign up with the link in the description down below. Click Get Free Crypto as well as Daily Mine. And they also have a live and demo account, which allows you to trade around with 100K in Monopoly money to practice your skills before using real cryptocurrency. So definitely make sure to check out BitYard if you haven't already. So moving back into XRP here, what we're truly waiting for is just a general direction. Literally, we've been trading sideways for days now, and we can count it out for us. You can see here it's been 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. 12 days now. We're going on the 12th day of flatlined, zero movement, no volume, and sideways trading at the undersold you know, level here. This is going to break, guys. I really, really, really want to uh, express that to you that if you're waiting for XRP, you are in a good, you know, in a good standpoint right now because this is early. So I'm getting prepared. Although I do have shorts opened on the XRP and it's been since honestly point C here, there is a possibility I might take my profits now since most of these cryptocurrencies are kind of leaning towards a potential swing. And I might actually, I think I am going to do that after today's episode is actually take my profits off of this because there's a chance we'll probably come back out of this depending on how the market's open today. But I am going to probably take, I am definitely going to take my profits on this with the anticipation of potential breaks to the upside. Regardless, we're still in a good point here because if we break bullish above our downtrend, we can immediately expect to see a bigger run. And if we break through price floor at 59 cents, it's an immediate drop down to, you know, 40 cents, 30 cents here, which would give us plenty of time to buy in at short or buy long. So I am going to take my profits here. And uh, we are getting very close to a decision, which is what we're waiting for. Same thing with Ethereum and same thing with Bitcoin here. Uh, I would love to see us break through this falling wedge fractal here. It tends to do that. You can see typically in the past here, when Bitcoin and crypto kind of trade sideways inside of this, we we do break. These are bullish biased patterns here. This consolidation usually tends to lead to a break. And now we have an even bigger one, which should lead us to a break. Ideally, that's the similar pattern that we're seeing here. It'd be very weird to see um, our you know falling wedge pattern continue to fall lower, although it would still be implied that a longer bear run is expected here. You know, we could have seen this breakout happen here and see the run, but it did it. And it led to even more conservative correction. So here we are retesting it again. We'll see, are we going to continue to drop lower inside the falling wood fractal, or are we going to break to the upside here? That's the ideal scenario that we're looking for. So trades haven't been made yet. Obviously you guys know that it's really just a waiting game right now for pretty much all these cryptocurrencies. Uh, there's nothing to buy in on. I mean, Answer me that. What is there to buy in on? Could you have traded between 35 and 38K on Bitcoin? Sure. Is it worth it? I don't think so. I don't like to trade inside a falling wedge fractal. Not that necessary. Although we did do this immediate short, which was a big opportunity because this was once again deciding whether we were going to see a big break or a big swing. But inside of it, seeing this movement, I'm not ready to do that yet. But here we are doing the same thing again. So we're going to either see a big break or a big swing. And that's when we'll make our profit off of on XRP, on Bitcoin maybe on Ethereum. Actually, Ethereum doesn't look too bad as well. So these are what we are waiting for, these specific events to happen. And I think it all has to do with the S&P. If S&P gets rejected off its daily moving average here today, there's a chance it's going to correct. It will correct if we get rejected here. And that will cause Bitcoin and Ethereum to reject off its resistance here and see prices fall. And then we'll short the coin. If we see S&P break through our moving average, which hopefully, and it looks like that's what's happening because we're recovering extremely well, then we should be able to see Bitcoin and Ethereum and XRP break bullish outside of their falling wedges and start to see the rest of February looking extremely profitable, which is what I think is going to happen here. But otherwise, guys, that's pretty much going to wrap up today's video. But with that being said, guys, I do want to talk more about Alto and Alto Crypto IRA with you. All right, guys, I want to give a huge shout out to Alto IRA for sponsoring today's episode. As with all cryptocurrency projects, please do your own research and never invest anything you can't afford to lose. So guys, Alto is a brokerage company that facilitates investments in alternative asset classes through retirement accounts, also known as IRAs. And it's called its retirement account, the alternative IRA, but it's simply an IRA with flexible investment options. Now guys, once you have chosen the type of retirement account that you want to open with Alto, you can then choose from two products, Alto IRA or the Alto Crypto IRA. And since cryptocurrency investing has been steadily gaining 
gaining in popularity over the past few years, they pretty much created these options. And now this option for investing in crypto with retirement funds are still few and far between, but Alto offers a simple and seamless solution. Now also commonly referred to as a Bitcoin IRA, a crypto IRA is a self-directed IRA in which you can buy and sell crypto assets, typically through an exchange. And specifically designed for crypto investors, the Alto Crypto IRA is a self-directed IRA that allows you to buy and sell more than 90 cryptocurrencies through its integration with Coinbase and with more being added all the time. Now, Alto's integration with Coinbase custody means crypto assets are safe and secure within the United States' largest crypto exchange. And investing with an IRA also means tax advantages to you as an investor. So if you're looking for an easy solution to save on your taxes, then setting up a crypto Roth IRA might actually be something to consider. And your crypto earnings can also grow tax-free or at least tax-deferred. That's right, under current tax rules, regardless of how much your investment grows or how many times you buy and sell crypto within a Roth IRA, you'll never pay a dime in taxes. And unlike traditional IRAs, you are not required to begin taking distributions during your lifetime. And obviously the tax-free nature of a crypto Roth IRA is its biggest advantage. The Alto Crypto IRA will allow you to trade coins 24 seven with minimum investments of just 10 bucks. And from a tax standpoint, there isn't technically any fundamental difference between a standard Alto IRA and an Alto Alto Crypto IRA. However, the company has decided to keep the accounts separate out of an abundance of tax caution and to show the different investments in each IRA. Now, just as a disclaimer, I'm no financial advisor. And for me personally, I wouldn't move my current retirement account into a crypto IRA. If possible, I would actually open a second one and then trade inside it to avoid capital gains, which believe it or not, a lot of people currently do with stocks in their Roth. Obviously, before messing around with your retirement account, please speak with a licensed professional and your options if you were to consider a crypto IRA. That said, I can certainly make a case for using self-directed IRAs. And if you're a skilled crypto trader, Alto IRA can actually help you put more funds towards your investment empire. But with that being said, guys, if you're not sure whether alternative assets make sense in your retirement investment portfolio, then I would urge you to stick with conventional investments until you determine whether these asset classes make sense for you. But obviously and simply put, alternative assets don't belong in every retirement portfolio. So definitely be careful and don't let caution stop you from making the right investment choices for yourself. Otherwise, huge shout out to Alta IRA for sponsoring today's episode. Definitely make sure to smash the like button for the YouTube algorithm, turn on post notifications, subscribe, and I'll see you guys in tomorrow's video. Peace.